to the front. Let's just get free in worship tonight. Let's lift our hands and just welcome King of Glory, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. We honor you in this place. Holy Spirit, we say come have your way. Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So God, we invite the Spirit of the liberty in this place tonight. We say have your way, be enthroned upon your people's praises, Jesus. of a dry and thirsty land you give of your mercy with a mighty outstretched hand and waves of your power come crashing over us you clothe us with fire and you purify our hearts as we wait for you our hearts are Lord, as we wait for you, as we wait for you, our hearts are open, Lord, as we wait for you, you give of your fullness, so full of grace and truth. You rescue the sinner, all the lost are found in you. You heal every sickness, and you set the captives free. Come and reign on our city, a move of God we long to see. As we wait for you, our hearts are as we wait for you, as we wait for you, our hearts are open, Lord, as we wait for you, as we wait, say, as we wait for you, our hearts are open, Lord, as we wait. As we wait for you, our hearts are open, Lord. As we wait for you, oh, come on. Oh, you pull it out. Oh. Your glory, pour out tonight of your glory. Yeah. He's pouring out like wave after wave after wave. He's pouring out like wave after wave after wave. He's pouring out like. Pouring out like wave after wave after wave, he's pouring out like wave after wave after wave, pouring out like wave after wave after wave, pouring out like wave after wave after wave. Way, after way, after way, 
and waves of your glory, waves of your spirit. Oh. Come on, declare our God is the God of the breakthrough. Come on, come on. He's clearing out paths, making ways through. Come on and sing it. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. He's clearing it out, yeah. He's clearing out paths, making ways through. He'll do it for you, yeah. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. Oh, He's clearing out paths, making ways through. Make your way tonight. Our God is the God of the breakthrough. You turn my night into day. Come on. I put off all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. next to us a little bit come on just I, I'm that's not that's not metaphorical that is a literal shake somebody next to you. <laughs> Woo! I believe that the breaker wants to clear out paths and makes a way through in your life today it's like we're calling out in the wilderness like John the Baptist prepare the way did you know one of the greatest ways you prepare the way is to put off the spirit of heaviness and just give God praise. And I'm talking about wild, crazy David with all his might dance praise. So come on, some of you need to get out of the aisles, come to the front. We're going to push in and we're going to praise God because I believe when the praise goes up, the breakthrough comes down. How many of y'all believe that tonight? The one who praises gives birth to breakthrough. Come on. So let's sing it again. I put off all my heaviness and put on the garment of praise. You turn my morning into dancing. You turn my night into day again. I put off all my heaviness and I put on this garment of praise. Come on. You turn my morning.
I'll take a quick water break because I don't work out. Get my heart rate up up in here. This is called Crazer Size. Okay, that was cheesy, whatever. Making ways through. Come on, see it again. Our God is a God of the breakthrough. As we give you the praise, He's clearing out paths, making ways through. I'm 
thank yous as a sword in the realm of the spirit and as we're lifting up thank yous to Jesus regardless of what we feel or experience I see the Lord cutting off hindrances he's cutting off limitations he's cutting off things that have held us back and as we lift up the thank yous tonight God is doing a sanctifying work he is cutting off ha ah. so Lord we lift up our thank yous. We lift up our praises to you. Come on, go ahead. Go ahead. Lift up your thank yous to the Lord tonight. 
Lift up your blessing to the Lord tonight.
just feel like we need to just sit here for a moment in the presence of the Lord and lift. Whether you sing or you don't, I don't, it doesn't matter, but I feel like we just we need to speak out thanksgiving and praise to the Lord tonight. You can sing a melody, you can speak it, you can whisper it. It doesn't matter. God hears the sound of a worshiping heart. But the Bible says to let the sound of his praise rise. Just for a few moments, just, just begin. Off the screen, off the script, off the, the hearts of the ones in love, the grateful ones. Come on. Just let your worship rise. sing a song for you, but God can play the strings of your heart, and we can lift up a melody. We sing to you.
find the end. I can't find the end. Swimming in the ocean of your grace. Mm. You bear the scars. You bear the scars of my redemption. If you're planning on holding back, this is a pretty bad time to hold back your praise. When the king is in the room, when the king is in the room, it's time to break the alabaster box over Jesus. No turning back in our worship to you tonight, Jesus. No turning back. No holding back. No holding back. No, 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 no. I'll pull my praises on you. I'll pull my worship on you, Lord. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. And you're so worthy. And you're so worthy. And you're so worthy. You're so worthy.
damos gracias Señor Oh te damos gracias Señor Te damos toda la gloria Te damos toda la gloria Toda la gloria Oh te damos gracias Te damos, te damos toda la gloria We give you all of the glory We give you thanks and worship We give you all of the
that he pulls people up out of the miry clay and he sets them in a solid place where they stand upon the rock of their salvation. And though they may go through tribulations or trials, they will never be shaken because he's not shaken. Whew. Come on, just put your hands up one last time and just love on Jesus, you guys. Uh, come on, just sing that one more time. Jesus, we love Thank you, Lord. Come on, just give him a big hand. Just give Jesus a big shout. Come on, just lift your voice. heavy up in here. <laughs> Weighty, heavy glory. Hallelujah. Not up here. Whew. Why don't we turn up the lights? I mean, you know, we're not here to perform. It's about Jesus. Uh, I'm like looking around. How I many know prophetic people like to look? They're like, who's out there? <laughs> people say, if you're really prophetic, you'll know. Why, I'm in a spaceship right now. <laughs> Jesus. Huh. No, I, I, I got it. I'm just having fun. Listen, how many have a good time this week? Yeah. Anybody here that, you know, you were able to make it out to some of the other sessions? Just wave at me like this. Yeah, come on. We've been having a rich time. It's been amazing. Uh, was anybody at the Seer Lab? Put your hands up and wave them. Come on, look at that. Tons of people around here. Uh, you got the impartation to see this, uh, this week, and, and, and so we're excited. And Listen, there's good news. There's still one night left. And we got a, a, a Seer in the house who's going to be preaching tonight. And uh, I'm not sure what the Lord's going to do as far as uh, through him, but I know it's going to be really good. And, uh, and, and so we're excited, you guys. And listen, welcome to night 800. Come on, somebody. Woo! 800 nights of revival. I mean, that's like, that, that's crazy. Uh, the, the 800 club. Come on. <laughs> we, 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 we've won up the 700 club now. We're, come on, somebody watch that on TV. We're the 800 club. The, we got our own thing going on, on the live stream. Not, not quite as you know, many people, but how many know there's, there's people watching from all over the world? Just wave like this. I want you to wave so they can see your hands. Come on, that's us giving you some love wherever you're at, whether you're in India or you're uh, you know, in, in England or, or Portugal. I mean, listen, people are watching from all over the place. Over 200 nations have, have viewed in on the live stream and watch. And, uh, and we, we actually look at our analytics and we got around 50,000 people that watch a month. And so how do you know that, that there, there wouldn't be a pastor in any city that wouldn't like to have that many people come into their church every week, right? And so that's the power of technology and what God is doing. And, uh, you know, I love it because how many know God wants to spread the fire, right? Yeah. And, and, and so uh, I want to do something really quick. I saw this. Uh, you know, this is a conference that is about behind the veil. It's about seeing in the spirit. And uh, I saw something that I wanted to do real quick. Uh, listen, if you, if you came, if you flew in or you came from out of state or out of country, just stand up real quick. If that's you, if you flew in from out of state or out of country, come on, look at all these guys. Come on, give these guys a big hand. Now, wait, stay standing. Those of you that flew in from out of state or out of country, now come up to the front. I want to pray for you real quick. 
Because listen, part of the vision of the revival, I want to ask Miranda to come pray with me, but part of the vision of the revival is that we want to spread the fire all over the world. And, and so just up here, you guys. Uh, yeah, you can just get in a, 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 a little line there. Right there. That's good. Don't get too close. You know, um, you guys are facing the wrong way. You can face me. There, there. Now scoop back a little. You guys act like you've never been in one of these meetings. You've watched them all over. We're going to pray for you. You might fall down. So, and if you don't, that's okay too. Because how many know that it's not about falling down. It's about catching the fire. You know, I love Randy Clark's story. He went to a Rodney Howard Brown meeting. Rodney Howard Brown prayed for him five times. He didn't feel a lick. And you know what happened when he went to the next church called, uh, you know, at that time it was the, uh, you know, TACF. It was, you know, pastored by, actually it was a vineyard church. Now I think about it, but um, it was pastored by John and Carol Arnott. The very next place he went, he's wondering, did I even get anything? He laid hands five times and the Toronto blessing broke out and went all around the world for 10 solid years. And they, they saw saw 9 million people come through their doors. And, and so listen, we believe in impartation and we believe in activation, but one of the things the Holy Spirit told me is that whenever we're doing our events now, we need to make sure we lay hands on the people that come from out of state and out of uh, country because how I many you know they're, they're, they're literally, it's a sacrifice to come. And, and, and so stretch your hands to these guys. Miranda, I want you to come and, uh, and, and listen, I'm going to enjoy this first couple uh, real, real good. This is my father and mother-in-law, Miranda's parents, Doug and Diana. Give them a big hand for coming. And they're Mennonite, but they're Holy Ghost at the same time. Woo! And, and, and so, Lord, we just thank you, God, right now. You guys just get ready. Just put your hands out. Lord, we thank you right now for a fresh impartation of revival fire. I thank you that you want to spread that fire all over the earth, Lord. And I pray right now for a tangible anointing to come, Lord God, upon these here, uh, Lord, from, their, uh, from other countries and other states and other cities, Lord. And we pray that they would be contagious with revival, that wherever they would go, the manifest presence of God's glory would break out. And so, Lord, we release it right now. <laughs> release right now. <laughs> Listen, catchers, get ready. <laughs> right now, in Jesus' name, we release that fire. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Come on, give these guys a big hand. Woo! You can go back to your seats if you can. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, you can lay there, but, you know, it's all good. You guys got it. And, and, and listen, that's the truth. I mean, we had one girl that didn't know if she caught the anointing or not, and she went back to Lithuania, and then someone got raised from the dead. I mean, no, that's pretty powerful. She totally was at the outpouring for like two months. And it, it, see, sometimes it's not about feeling, you guys. It's just about getting into an atmosphere where the presence of God and his glory is being released and poured out and the fire is coming. I mean, listen, don't get into a dead atmosphere. Ain't nothing going to happen. Come on, some of you know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? It's, it, the only thing that happens is yawns and hunger pains in the stomach wishing that the message is over so they could go and eat. Come on, that, that's a lot of churches on Sunday. But listen, not this one, <laughs> not, not, not the, you know, those of you that are in here, not your churches either, hopefully. And if, they're, if they are, then go fire them back up. Whew. But listen, you know what, just everybody put your hands out. <laughs> Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for the release of fire in this room. Lord, we release the angels of heaven right now, and we thank you, God, that there is an impartation, an activation, a release <laughs> of fire all over this place, God. Whew, in Jesus' name. <laughs> stir up the anointing of revival, stir up the anointing of fire, stir up the anointing, Lord God, of visions and encounters and dreams, prophecy, Lord, and even that realm of, of, of the supernatural glory we've been encountering for 800 nights in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, some of you say, wow, that, why'd you do that? Well, I felt the spirit of jealousy on some of you. <laughs> Woo! But you know what God loves? Godly jealousy. It's all good. Come on. How many know hunger is the currency of heaven, we heard from one of our speakers the other day. And, uh, and, and so listen, welcome you guys. Uh, I'll just give a couple announcements here. And uh, shortly we are going to uh, get John Thomas up here. But um, we got some good news. This next weekend we're going to have a firestorm weekend, you guys, right here in San Diego. 
And, and some of you are like, what does that mean? Well, listen, I- anything goes at the fire and glory outpouring, and sometimes God just blows the prophets into our midst, and we don't even know it. But um, listen, I, I, got, I got a good friend on the front row, Andre Ashby. Would you stand up? And listen, Andre, as well as our good friend Gershom Sikala, are going to be preaching with us this next weekend at Heart of God. So Gershom's going to be preaching Friday night, and uh, you know Andre's going to be preaching Saturday night, and then I'll preach Sunday night. And uh, and, and and listen, it's going to be a, a good night. And uh, you know Thursday we got a service as well. Uh, and and so uh, how, how many know that God wants to just keep going, right? Just. So if you're here in San Diego or you're watching online, get out here. It's going to be an amazing week. And uh, listen, this is such a fresh announcement. We didn't even got a graphic for it. Come on, how many know uh, fresh bread? We want the manna of heaven. Um, So there's your announcement. Don't miss it next week. For those of you that are here local or even Southern California, Arizona, come out. We're going to have a good time. And, uh, you know, just show up. Heart of God Church down the street, about 15 minutes. Uh, A second announcement that I want to make is this, is that we are taking a trip. uh, We're taking a team to Malawi with us. We're going to go to Malawi, Africa in June. And, uh, you know, June 3rd through the 11th. And and, and so you guys are going to want to join us there. Um, And and, and so, listen, maybe we blew the power out. (laughs) Uh, me and John were actually joking around about that earlier. Uh, do not blow the power out. <laughs> I'm t- I told him when, you know, he was telling me about how John Paul Jackson would go places and the power would blow up. And I told him, I said, that's only happened to me one time. And I was preaching at Rick Joyner's. He introduced me, hand me the mic, and the, the sound system blew up. <laughs> I mean, that makes for an awkward meeting. <laughs> then you got to shout. But anyway. Um, so, so, uh, yeah, there's the Lash Academy, but we're going to be going to Malawi. <laughs> and so anybody that wants to come to Malawi, uh, June 3rd through the 11th, you can come with us. It's open. We have 50 slots open. We have quite a few already taken up, but we're going to, um, we're going to go to that nation with the fire of God and revival. We're expecting up to 50 to 80,000 people a night. And, uh, and I love it because guess what? You get to be the ministry, uh, team and, and, and we're going to see blind eyes open, deaf ears here and crippled walk. And uh, you know, uh, demons cast out. And you'll, if you want to experience the full gospel, then come. That's what's going to happen. And uh, I guarantee it, or you can have your money back. And some of you are like, "Wow, that's a pretty good guarantee." No, you don't understand. Eighty thousand people that need prayer—they're going to mob you. <laughs> I mean, listen, you, you think you can get away? You cannot. They will find you. And, and, but anyway, whew. But that's, that's one of the exciting things about these trips. We're going to actually be doing some ministry of the refugee camps from, uh, you know, there's refugees from Rwanda, from Ethiopia, from all over some of the war-stricken areas of, uh, of, of Africa. And, and, and so we're going to minister to them. We're going to also, um, we have a, a, a feeding program set up to about 5,000. And so there's going to be so much opportunity to minister uh, to people and to the poor uh, and, and just really love on a nation. And one of the things that's amazing is we got invited by, tr- by two tribal elders that are um, the chiefs of a village that they've never had the gospel preached with power. And, and so they've invited us to come. And here's what they said. Um, at first, when you know our contact went and talked to them and said, hey, we'd like to do a crusade in this region, they were like, no, we don't want that, that, that Christianity, prosperity, gospel stuff here because they had heard that people go in and just try to take money from... Uh, people and they said no no just watch YouTube and they saw Moran and I preach and people getting healed and they were like we want that and you know what they said they said we're sick and tired of the witch doctors cursing people and they said bring your Jesus that has power to break their power <laughs> Woo! so we're gonna go and we're gonna break some powers <laughs> of the witch doctors because how I many of sickness is in those countries they get cursed because they think they're getting something good but the devil gives them something bad but Jesus is so good Woo! So if you want to go, anybody want to go with us, just put your hand up. Come on. Uh, well, in fact, if you want to go, just stand up. I'll pray for you right now to get the money. If, if, if that's you and, and you're saying to yourself right now that money is the only thing that would hold you back, then go ahead and just stand. Father, we just thank you right now for the fire of God. And Lord, I thank you. You burn up everything on assignment to hold finances back from these people in Jesus' name. And Lord, we release the, the uh, prosperity with a purpose to go out and to preach the gospel, to release the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven in that nation and Lord we do we release right now the finances of heaven in Jesus name amen Woo! so you guys can be seated Uh, man I'm telling you it's uh, there's fire in this room tonight (laughs) and uh, and so uh, 
one last thing. They put it up there. It's the Elisha School. We're going to be hosting a, a school, nine-month school. Uh, we're excited. You know, um, Pastor Mark is working with us on this, as, uh, you know, as, as well as uh, our good friend Chris Evans from Los Angeles. And uh, we're responding to a prophetic word that we got given to us by Bob Jones back in 2009 that he prophesied to us that in San Diego we would see a boot camp and a training center release. And he prophesied that God was going to release revival and that it would launch prophetic revivalists all over over the earth and that there would be, um, you know, the, the supernatural, uh, you know, uh, anointing. That, that's what he, he told me was that there'd be a grace for the supernatural to be imparted to a generation and then to send them out into the harvest. Come on. And, and, and so listen, if anybody wants to come, you can do that. If, uh, and if you are interested in that school, there's a booth in the back. There's some brochures in the back. You can check it out and get the rest of the information. You can email the email that is there. Uh, and there's no age limit on it. We believe that the move of God that the Lord is releasing is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's three, but yet it's one. And, uh, and, and you know what? Whenever the generations come together, there's breakthrough. I mean, you know, the number one plan of the enemy is to divide the generations, Right? And, 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 you know, it's like, you know how he does that? He gets the young people thinking they're too good, and he gets, you know, how many know the young people can get in pride and be like, we don't need you? And then the older people are like, you in pride? You know, it's like, but how many know Jesus wants to bridge the gap, heal the, the, that ancient wound, and release people into the fullness of God? Amen? So come on, come. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> oh, man, this is going to be a good night, man. I can feel it. God loves you. <laughs> He's prepared this atmosphere. Um, listen, before we get John up here, we're going to uh, receive an offering tonight. And listen, I heard the Holy Spirit say something to me. He said this. He said, I'm releasing the treasuries tonight. And, and, and I, I, I really, I can tell you, there is breakthrough in this place tonight. And, you know, it's interesting because some people go, well, what is the treasure rooms? Well, I've had many encounters. In fact, it started for me in 2004. I was in Seattle, Washington, and uh, I was getting ready for a meeting, and I was staying at one of the pastor's house, and I began to pray in the Spirit. And when I was praying in the Spirit, um, I, got, I went into a vision, and I saw a massive treasure room in heaven. And, and there's a reason why uh, I want to share this after the Lord said this to me. I mean, this is a Sears conference, and one of the things that we need to learn how to do is decree what we see. It's a principle that releases things. You know, a lot of people, the reason why they don't see breakthrough is because they get a word, they hear a word, they see a word, they have a dream, but then they don't do anything with it. They don't actually put the practical legs, uh, you know, uh, behind the dream or even pray into it or decree it. Like sometimes you got to wage a good warfare with the words that God gives you. That's why the, you know, the apostle Paul encouraged Timothy. He said, wage a good warfare with the prophetic words that were spoken over you and don't neglect the gift of God that was imparted to you with the laying on of hands. And so how do we war against the devil? We take the word of the Lord and we war with it. And, and, and so um, I'll, I'll never forget, I got sucked right up into this vision. And, and it was so funny. I was in this place. I've had twice where God showed me uh, the treasure room of heaven. And, uh, you know, I was in this place. And I, in the first time that he took me, I saw silver and gold as far as the eyes could see. And what was interesting about it is I didn't really even care about that. Like, I could see it, you know. But on the other side of the room, there was like this smaller room. And in the room, it had all these gemstones in there. And each gemstone had an attribute on it. I could pick one up and it said uh, healing anointing. I pick up another one, it would say wisdom. I pick up another one, understanding. Another one, fear of the Lord. Another one, angelic encounters. Another one, miracles. Another one. And every time I pick them up, I put them in my belly. And some of you go, Why would you do that? Well, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And so in this vision, I was putting it all within me. And, and um, you can tell I got a lot of them, right? But anyway, <laughs> whoo! And here, here's, here's what happened. I, I came out of this encounter, and it was so funny because, you know, the Lord said it's the treasure rooms of heaven. I mean, in the book of Matthew, it says, Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where rust and moth cannot destroy or a thief can't break in and steal from. But then it says this, where your heart is, there your treasures also will be. And, and, and here's the, the crazy thing about it is I saw gold bars and silver bars and, and coins and all this stuff, but I was not the least bit attracted to that stuff. I was like, I, I really just was, going after this other room and this is what the Lord said to me he said tell the people of God that silver and gold might run the earth but it's just asphalt in heaven he said that what are they going to do with it when they go to heaven my whole city is built out of materials that everybody on earth thinks are precious he said listen you, that stuff doesn't run heaven it only runs earth and he said the true riches of God are what you saw in that room 
He said, it's everything that brings you closer to me. Everything that brings you closer to my kingdom. And that's why he said, tell my people if they'll seek first my righteousness and my kingdom, the things that bring them closer to my heart. He said, I'll give them all the asphalt they need for their calling. And you know what? The Lord is so faithful, you guys, because one of the things that I've learned about God, especially in the realm of the seer, is when I came out of that encounter, I began to make decrees. I said, okay, God, well, you know, I started making decrees that God would release the treasure rooms of heaven. And what's interesting is I'll, I'll never forget, um, one time I went to Minnesota. You know, we, we used to go to Minnesota like three, four times a year. And uh, I went to Minnesota. And, and when I went to Minnesota, uh, you know, this business guy comes up to me after a meeting and he says, hey, God told me to give you something. And I'm, I, you and Bobby Connor, we, I was there with Bobby. And he goes, uh, he said that you would know what it means because I don't know, but I know I got to be obedient. And he hands me a hundred Troy ounce of silver, like a brick. You know how heavy that is? I mean, it's like, and, and he hands it to me and he's like, I don't know what it means. You know, what do you think? And I said, I know exactly what it means. It's a sign that we're going after the right thing. That's the way I took it. It's like, I've been seeking after his kingdom, his heart. We've been seeking after going after the things of God. And now he's saying, here's a brick to give you a sign that you're on the right track. You know what was awesome about this and funny is I had a backpack. And I put the brick in the backpack. And on my way home, I had to go through the security. So I'm walking like this because I got a hundred Troy ounce brick in my backpack. And you know what happens is I go through the, I just know what's going to happen. You know, they're going to like search me. And so I put my backpack through and sure enough, it's like, Burr, you know, and they're like, they're like, sir, could you step over here? You know, and I step over and they, they look at me and they go, why do you have a, a, what is this big thing in here? And they open it up and they're like, it's a silver brick. Why do you have this? And I didn't know what else to tell them. I just said, oh, my father gave me an inheritance. Let's talk about my papa in heaven. And you know what they did? They went, wow, you got an amazing dad. That's what the guy said to me. He goes, I wish I had your father. Dude, in my mind, I was like, oh, you can have him. I'm going to preach the gospel. And, and, but but the, Lord, the Lord said, look down. And he had a taser. He said, don't try it. <laughs> That's what the Lord said. And I said, all right. And I took my brick and I zipped it up. And as I was leaving, man, I felt the love of God. Just this brick on my back, you know, the whole way. And, 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 and you know, it, it's interesting because we have had several times in this outpouring where God has released uh, things. And, 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 you know, what's interesting. You know, we have an app called Elisha Revolution. And we, we live stream the meetings through that app. We, uh, we have teachings. We have all kinds of stuff, trainings, message of the week, series that we give away. Uh, we have one-minute answers. And the, the, this platform for the app, you know, it, it costs a pretty good chunk. And what's amazing about it is I'll never forget, in the second year of revival, God began to speak to me. And he began to tell me, he, he said, Jeremy, I, I want to release the treasure rooms of heaven. I got caught into the second experience. And in this one, it was different. I was, um, I was there. And there was an angel, um, which I knew was the, you know, the, it was an angel over the treasury. And, and, and it was the minister of finances. I took his hand. And we began to fly over the treasury. And I saw a mountain that was there and cattle walking around the mountain. It was the weirdest thing. And I saw deeds to lands. I saw properties. I saw um, things. And, and as we're flying, I saw the cattle. And the uh, scripture in my mind said, my, uh, you know, it says, my God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Like it was, and I just flew. And I got to another place. And there's all these rooms. And each room, uh, I could see like a uh, uh, hundred thousand of them had names on them. And I knew that now I was no longer in the treasure room of God, but I was in the treasure room of people. And he said to me, just like every man, woman, and child, that, uh, when they become old enough, gets a bank account on the earth. He said, in heaven, there's a bank account over their lives. And he said, according to what they do on the earth, there's treasure stored up that's to be released on the earth. And he told me there's two ways to see the treasuries released. He said, it's by radical obedience and intimacy with God. And he said, the second is generosity of heart. And I won't go into the rest of the encounter because it's just too long. But, um, but the Lord showed me, though, he said, you want to know why, uh, why people that don't know me uh, is celebrities and business people keep prospering when they're wicked. I said, how? He said, they're tapping in by one of the principles. He said, generosity of heart. They have charities and they give to the poor. And he said, it moves the treasuries of heaven. Why? Because it's a principle that's set in the, in the realm of, of the kingdom of God. But he said, how much more, though, can the church begin to advance and prosper if they begin to tap into not just generosity of heart, but radical obedience? And you know what happened? I'll tell you, I just love God. He said, I want you to birth an app. And I thought, that's awesome, Jesus. Do you know how much it costs? This is how I talked to him. 
Because I actually looked it up, and I'm like, Lord, do you know how much this is going to cost? This is going to cost us $8,000 just to totally start. And you know what happened? I'm not even joking. That same, you know, that, that same night, this guy comes up to me, and he's like, I got something in my car, but I got a bad back, and I can't carry it. But you know what? Maybe you can get one of your interns to. And, I, and, and so I sent my uh, administrator at the time, David, out to the car, and he comes back carrying this box. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, it's a monster box of silver coins. He said, God told me to give it to you. And he's like, and guess what it was? $9,000 worth of silver. And the Lord said to me, do you believe it's a vision from heaven now? And guess what? Now we have 11,400 people that have subscribed to our app. The gospel's going all over the world. And we've seen around 60% of the, uh, the budget for fire and glory for the last year that's come through online, you guys. See, God wants to release creativity and he wants to release breakthrough. But here's the way it works is you decree what you see and then you just trust him and he, he works it out. And, and so listen, you guys, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. And, and so, uh, listen, if there's anybody here that's believing for breakthrough, I really do believe there's breakthrough in this place tonight. And, and, and so uh, we'll give you the opportunity to, uh, to so if you need an envelope, put your hand up. And here's what I'll say to you. Just pray and obey. What he tells you, do it. And, and how many know that's the formula for breakthrough, you guys? And listen, some of you are going to get major breakthrough in this place where you've been stuck because you're, you're going to listen to the voice of God rather than just what you always do. And as you're obedient, the breakthrough's going to to come forth. And listen, if you're watching online, you can sew as well. If you guys are making out checks in here, you can make them out to E-Rev. Um, if you're watching online, you can just uh, go to our website, ElishaRevolution.com, or if you're watching on YouTube, there's actually uh, a link that's right below the comment section. You can click the X on the comment section, then there's a giving link right there. You can click that. Um, but listen, you guys, we're going uh, to we're, we're gonna sow into the kingdom. We're going to bless the prophetic vessels that God has brought to us in this uh this conference with James Gall and John Thomas, and I, I, I really believe that God wants to uh, God wants to release miracles like I'm talking about. And and you got to understand, anybody that knows us, like we we. <laughs> We're always like living on the edge of, you know, what God is telling us to do. And it's so much so that we get out there on the branch and it's like, Lord, if you don't come through, we're going to like this branch might break. But how many know if his hand is the branch, it doesn't break? Come on, somebody. Whew. So listen, go ahead and fill that stuff out, and then what we'll do is we'll put the buckets up here, and then afterwards I'm going to pray uh, for the release of the treasure rooms, and I believe that God's going to uh, release that. And and so uh, and and listen, you guys, please hear me when I say this. Uh, you know, uh, here here's the thing: if if you uh, if you're offended and you don't want to give, don't give because that's not what this message is about. It's about intimacy and obedience, and, 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 and what we want is people that want to sow because they honor the king. And I, I tell people, I don't believe in manipulation. I believe in revelation because when you get revelation, it unlocks things. I like to say that when, I, when, I, when we receive offerings because I want you to understand a heart behind this. It's not, we're, we're, we're not trying to just get a big offering to do something. We actually want to equip a generation so that they can step into breakthrough when it comes to finances and the supernatural and so whenever you guys are ready, go ahead and come up, and then we're going to pray. Let's put a song on.
Jesus. Stretch your hands out, you guys. Lord, we thank you for every seed that's sown in this room. And Lord, those that are given online. And Father, we do. We just ask you, Lord, to release those treasure rooms of heaven, God. I thank you that your word uh, to us tonight, Lord God, was that it's generosity of heart, Lord, and it's radical obedience that releases the kingdom, Lord God. But Lord, even more than that, Lord, your word says, seek first uh, your righteousness and your kingdom, and all else will be provided and released. And so, Lord, we decree right now the release of the treasure rooms of heaven over people's lives. We speak right now super natural acceleration, Lord, that there would be that hundredfold release, Lord, that God, even debts would be canceled, Lord, that things would be released, Lord God, for the blueprints and the plans that you have given people. And Lord, let the testimony of Jesus be the spirit of prophecy, even as we testified about how you birthed our app and birth things. Lord, birth stuff in people's lives and their businesses, their ministries, their families, God, we release that anointing right now in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Whew. Man, I wish I was preaching tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because there's an atmosphere in this place. And, uh, but we're excited, you guys. We, we got a good friend, John Thomas, with us from Streams Ministries. And I've known John for 12 years. And, uh, you know, we've, we've done quite a bit together. And we've just had a good time doing it. And you know what I love about, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what I love about John is, listen, he's seen everything you could think of, you guys. The good, the bad, the ugly, the fun, the hilarious, the, the, the creepy, the weird. The, I, mean, I mean, listen, when you're in prophetic ministry for as long as he's been in ministry, and, and so really he just carries such an amazing anointing of wisdom on his life. And so I, I'm excited to be able to glean from that wisdom tonight. Anybody else want to receive? And so listen, would you guys welcome John Thomas as he comes? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Yay, Jesus. Wow. I am so excited about tonight. I was praying earlier, and the Lord showed me some of the things that are going to happen, and it's going to be fun. Some of you guys are going to have power encounters tonight. It's going to be good. I'm so excited. Yay, Daddy. Yeah, so we just give you permission to do whatever it is you want to do. But we honor you as Lord in this place. We take all of our plans and we place them at your feet and we say have your way we make our plans but you direct our steps and so Lord I, I ask that I would stay anchored only in your presence but nothing else would anchor me and that as you move that I would blow freely wherever it is that you would have me go wherever it is you'd have this meeting go and so we just Wow, we, we recognize you resting already, Holy Spirit, and we thank you, and we say you are welcome in this place. Come more, Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask that you would guide the words, guide the actions. Lord, that you would guide our hearts. We just surrender our hearts just to be moved wherever you want them to be moved. We, we, we just let go. Lord, we let go of offense. We let go of fear. Father, even right now, we, we just, we, we, we declare forgiveness over those that have broken trust with us. And we say that we trust you. Lord, we forgive them. We ask that you would bless them. And that you would stop the reaping of distrust in our hearts that came from judging the breaking of trust. 
<laughs> Father, I thank you that your oil is pouring over hearts right now. Lord, you promised Ezekiel that you would come and you would take out of people hearts of stone, places where circumstances and situations have caused hearts to become hard and that you would give them a heart of flesh that would be sensitive to you and that it would be a work of your spirit. And so, Lord, if there be anything in us that is hard that would resist what you want to do, we just surrender it right now when we say, Lord, take the heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. Hmm. So I want you to just repeat this phrase out loud. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I surrender to you, Lord. Have your way, God. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I had a really good message prepared. And the file broke, so I have no notes. <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to follow the threads and see wherever they go. I know where we're going to land, and so I'm... I'll give you guys a little picture because um, I know we're, we're going into impartation tonight because that's what the Spirit wants to do is he's going to release something in people's lives. And I know we've, we've kind of started in that place, um, but there, there's, there's more that's coming. And I'm, I'm just going to, I think I'm just going to share some stories um, because this thing about impartation, I mean, we, we, we talk about it a lot, but do we understand it? Um, the, the, the first time that the concept of impartation is talked about in Scripture, uh, it's in Numbers. And in Numbers, we're, we're getting towards the end of, um, we're getting towards the end of Moses' ministry, Moses' life, and the Lord tells him, hey, go up on that mountain and die. And, and Moses is like, wait a second, the people need a leader, but please. And so the Lord says, well, take Joshua and lay your hands on him, and I will take of the authority of the spirit that I've placed on you, and I will put it on him. Now, when Moses began to lead the people, now, they, he, he went through the plagues, but he wasn't leading the people through the plagues right? He was doing the plagues. They, he asked them to follow him, and then they told him, hey, leave. You're making things worse for us. So he just, he did what he had to do. But when he began to lead the people, they were leaving Egypt. What was the first miracle after he began to lead the people? They get to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea part so that they can get through, right? What's the first miracle that happens in Joshua's ministry? They get to the Jordan, the Jordan part, so that they can get through. And people realize that God had established him because what was on Moses' life was now on his life. It was different, but it was the same. It wasn't the exact same thing, but God began to do what he had done in Moses' life. He began to do it in Joshua's life. Moses, when he got his call, he was out in the wilderness, and he sees a burning bush. He turns aside, what's going on in this burning bush? He realizes, wow, this burning bush, it's, it's not being consumed. i, I got to get closer and figure out what's going on. As he gets closer, he hears a voice, and what's the first thing the voice says? 
Take off your shoes, you're on holy ground. So Joshua gets into the promised land, and he has just seen the walls of Jericho fall, and they're, 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 they're getting ready, well, actually, just before he sees the walls of Jericho fall, excuse me, right after Gilgal, where they circumcised because they hadn't been, and he's getting ready to see the walls of Jericho fall, and he goes out for a walk at night, and he sees the angel of the Lord. He sees the commander of the, man, the, the our Lord's armies. He doesn't realize it at first. He just sees a man with a drawn sword. And so his first thing is, hey, are you for us or are you against us? And I love God's answer when you ask that. Are you with us or are you with our enemies? He goes, neither. I'm with myself. Are you with me? <laughs> and that's exactly what he tells Joshua. Are you with us or are you with the enemy? He goes, no, but I have come as the commander of the Lord's armies. In other words, Joshua, submit. Because I'm the commander of the Lord's armies, not you. And the, then the next thing he says, take off your shoes for where you're standing is holy ground. He, he begins to have these experiences, these encounters that look like what he had seen. You remember the story of Elijah and Elisha? Now, we go through a lot of the different pieces of the story, so I'm going to leave out the popular piece. But when Elijah and Elisha leave Jericho and they get to the Jordan, what does Elijah do? Takes off his cloak, hits the water, and it opens, and they go across, right? Chariots of fire that are a distraction. Elijah gets taken up in a whirlwind. The cloak falls down. Elisha picks up the cloak, and he comes back to the Jordan, and the first thing that he does is he hits the water and says, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And the water parts. He starts with what he'd already seen because he had faith for it, because he knew he had gotten an impartation, and so he had faith to go there, but you never stop there. Right, Joshua had faith to see waters part because he'd seen waters part. But he couldn't stop there because he had to have faith to see walls fall down. Moses had never seen walls fall down. He had to go beyond what he'd received in the impartation, but it was because of the impartation that he got propelled into momentum so that he could discover his own anointing. Now, there are some principles that, that let you decide whether or not you're going to actually maintain an impartation, because how many have been in multiple impartation services and had a good time but didn't walk away with a new anointing? I know I have. Part of that is because there is a co-laboring with an impartation when you're going to receive it. Part of that co-laboring is honor. What, what, what does Elisha say to Elijah as he's being taken up? My father, my father, I, I recognize authority in you that you've done something in my life that I needed. My father, my father. You know, this word for honor, it's, it's a very interesting word. In, in the Hebrew, and I love looking at the roots of the Hebrew because the Hebrew language was originally just pictures. Now those pictures, each of those pictures have meaning, and if you can interpret those metaphors, they give you a fuller understanding of the words. And I've studied a lot of Hebrew words, and every single time, because they weren't about sounds. Like, our letters are sounds. Hebrew letters are not sounds. They're thoughts. They're concepts. And so those pictures, when they come together, would give you an understanding. One of the words for honor, it literally means to open up the floor plan of your tent to someone else so they can speak into it. So you open up the plan that you have for your own life so that somebody else can speak into that plan. See, when you, when you honor someone, you're actually allowing them to influence you. The Greek word for honor, it literally means to set a high price upon, that they're worth a lot, that it would take a lot before you would change. You're getting this. 
So you're giving them more influence. You're giving them more authority to speak into your life. Now, not every time you get an impartation do you have to do this, but there are impartations that are received by the laying on of hands, and then there's impartations because you have followed certain principles of the kingdom that allows you to walk in what God has given to somebody else. And and one of those, the, the, the principle of honor is key to maintaining it, but the key to getting that type of impartation is service. Why did Elisha qualify for Elijah's impartation. He served him, right? Because after this happens, all the prophets, all the schools of the prophets, they all recognized Elisha as their father. They, 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 they all knew, but nobody else knew. So like, you got all the prophetic people who are saying, yeah, he's got it, but the people are, who's he? And so the kings are going out to war, and they're trying to figure out what's going on because they're, they're, it's, it's not working the way that they thought. And so they're like, get us a prophet. And so they're like, well, Elisha is around. I don't know if there's a prophet, but Elisha is around, and he used to pour water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat, who was a man of God that actually understood the ways of God, his response is this. Yes, get him because he will have the word of the Lord. He knew he would have the word of the Lord simply because he recognized that he had served Elijah. Because he understood how the kingdom works. How many of you, and I know this is, this is going to be a smaller group out of this, how many of you have served in, in this outpouring that's been going on for 800 nights? Just put your hands up high. How many of you have seen God do stuff through you, not just to you? Everybody that had their hands up the first time had their hands up the second time. You get it. Because when you serve it, you get it. That's why Jesus says that you won't be trusted of something of your own until you can be trusted with someone else's. Now, this is not a popular message in our day, but it's a biblical principle. So if we want to actually operate in the things of the kingdom, we really should study the Bible, not what we like. So, so there, there's a principle of, of service. And you can't serve everybody. And, I mean, one of, one of the keys that was shared earlier, if you want to access something from heaven, one of the main keys for those in relationship is radical obedience. My wife and I were, were doing pretty well in a lot of different ways. We, we had a great job. I was a financial advisor. Um, I was number five in the country for the company that I was working for, a large company. It's now Chase Bank. Um, it was right after the, the merger. Um, and so I, I was doing really well financially. We were making way more money than what we should have been making at that age. Um, but we were, we were hungry for more. And so we, we, we knew that we were going to have to go someplace where stuff was happening because where we were at, we were the ones that were leading everything that was happening. Not everything that was happening, but in the community that we were in, we were all seen as the ones that somebody wanted to learn about healing. Or we, we were asked for our church to teach the ministry school. We were, we were leading leaders. We, we had done everything that we could possibly do. We had grown as far as we could in the environment that we were in. We knew that if we were going to go further, we were going to have to get around something. And me and, me and my wife were out walking one night. And as, as we're out there, we, we still can't figure out who asked the question. Because neither one of us can remember asking the question, but we both heard the question. Go figure, it may not have been either of us that asked the question, but either way, the the question is, well, who's the most like Jesus that you want to be like? And and my response, well, John Wimber's dead. I guess John Paul Jackson. Because I had seen something of Jesus in him that I wanted to emulate. And so Don is like, well, where does he live? Let's move there. (laughs) And and we we quit our jobs, sold our house. Now, I was trying to do all the right things, so I found a job in New Hampshire. 
And two weeks before we left, they called and said that the job was no longer available, that they'd call us if something else opened up. And so we moved across country with everything in a U-Haul and showed up in New Hampshire. Now, we, we didn't know anybody and streams. We weren't going there to be a part of an intern program. We weren't going there to be part of a, a staff. We, we just knew that they had a community there and they, that they were going to be teaching all of the courses there and we could actually learn. And there was a church there where they actually did prophetic teams and dream interpretation teams. So we could, we could do stuff. And so we showed up and every single day we showed up. We did whatever was needed. Now, we, we, we begin to develop relationship because it's amazing what happens when you serve. Uh, people take notice and they give you more opportunity to serve. <laughs> so, you know, church starts on Sunday morning and we need to, uh, we need to set up because we're in a school. So we, we went and set up chairs and then we went to the intercessory meeting for an hour before uh, and, and I'm walking around the sanctuary one day. Now, how many of you have heard John Paul talk about seeing the, the orbs and the lights and the different things like that? He, he, he would have, I mean, the, these tangible experiences where these balls of light would show up. One time, you know, like, I can't remember, it was 350 or 450 people were all in the room at the same time. He was in Birmingham, England, he was with Graham Cook at one of his conferences, one of his first conferences before Graham moved to the States. Uh, he'd invited John Paul to come to this conference. They're both doing workshops in the afternoon. John Paul begins to talk about these strange events. He, he's talking about going up into heaven. He's talking about seeing angels. And he starts talking about seeing lights. And while he's talking about seeing lights, they show up in the room. Everybody in the room sees them. There's all these lights, and they're dipping and, and, and going after people, and people are ducking trying to get out of the way, and everybody gets drunk. It was such a commotion that Graham heard it from his workshop, shut his workshop down, and moved everybody into the room just to be a part of it. John Paul couldn't stand up. He was, he was holding on to the pulpit drunk. Now, <laughs> I, I've been with John Paul in a lot of meetings. I've never seen him that drunk. I've seen him drunk one time, but not like that. It was crazy. Now, I just found this out a, a couple week, a week and a half ago. We did a conference with Graham, and so I was asking him about that. Like, what was that like? You know, what, what was your side of the story? I've heard John Paul tell that story a bunch of times. I've listened to the recording, and so he tells his story. He goes, you know what was really cool about it? it was at, that night it was in the, at the evening meeting, we were at the, at the venue, and me and John Paul and my daughter were sitting up on the um, balcony um, so that we could just kind of have some private space while the meeting was going on. And while we're sitting there, I, I was telling my daughter about what had happened, and she goes, Dad, why, why, why am I never in the meeting when the cool stuff happens? Like, why, why didn't I get to see that? And, and John Paul looks at her and says, well, give me your hand. Reaches out her hand, he, he gives, she gives him his hand, and when he grabs her hand in front of the three of them, lights appear and they get their own personal light show. She, she got her, her light show. Now that, that's pretty cool. So I'm setting up chairs at this church, praying over the chairs, because I don't know enough about sound to help the sound guys set up other than move some speakers to where they're supposed to go. Um, and as I'm doing that, I, I, I'm walking, and I look next to me, and right there, I mean, if I would have went like this, I could have touched it. Right there, there was a ball of light just hanging in the air right there. And I'm like, I mean, not in my mind's eye, in the physical realm. It was right there. I'm looking at the thing, and I'm like, I blinked just to see if it was real, and it was gone. I'm like, why did I do that? <laughs> no! <laughs> a couple, well, this is about probably almost a year later. I was at a meeting, and now I'm, I'm on staff at Streams at this point, and we're, we're gonna, getting ready for an impartation night. 
And I'm standing in the back watching everybody worshiping. And one of the ladies that's worshiping, I can see her in front of me, has these three bars of light. They're, they were this big. One red, one green, one blue. Three bars of light, and they were going around her head like this. And when they were between me and her head, I couldn't see her head. And then they were gone. And so I'm, I'm staring. My friend, Don Doobie, is standing next to me. And she's like, what are you seeing? I'm like, there's bars of light. And she's like, lay hands on me. So I go to grab her hand. She goes, no, not like that. She grabs my hand, puts it on her forehead, and she sees them. They were there in the physical. Now, I, why am I telling you this? Similar, anointing, but different. Because I served, I got an impartation. Now, here, here's the other piece where you can take the impartation a little bit further. Take responsibility for something that's been assigned to that person. Because every time I took responsibility for something that had been assigned to John Paul, my gift increased. When I began to take over um, a training center and I'm training other teachers how to teach the courses, my ability to interpret dreams, just boom. I mean, it went from here to here immediately because I needed it. Because you'll get the tool that you need for the job that you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. You're seeing how this, this principle works. Now, I've seen, well, we could talk crazy stories of stuff that I've seen that's been, been similar. I, I, I've had times where I, I've had that thing open up, and you can just look at somebody, and you know absolutely everything about them. I, I remember having this conversation with, uh, with John Paul about a year before he, he passed away, um, before he was sick, we're, I, I was coming in because I, I, I had an office in the office at the time, and I would travel, and then whenever I was back in town, we'd just sit down, we'd have a conversation just to, to try to develop relationship and, um, and have some interaction. And uh, he was telling me the story that it happened just a couple days ago. One of the ladies had come into the office, and she, you know, she knocks on his door, Hey, John Paul. And yeah, come on in. And as she walks in, he just looks at her. He says, yeah, that's actually a good idea. We should do that. Go ahead and make it happen. She's like, what? Well, you were coming in to ask me, blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think we should do that. Go ahead. And she just like, oh, okay. And, you know, just turns around and walks out in a day. He's like, um... <laughs> I guess I'm working with John Paul. Um, there was a level. Now, what, was, what was, was so fun about that is just hearing him get so excited about how God was speaking to him. After 64 years, because God had spoke to him since he was a kid. He was having angelic visitations when he was a child. He used to play a game with his childhood friends in the neighborhood. They would get together uh, in his garage, and they would say, John Paul's, they called the game, John Paul Tells You Your Future. <laughs> and he told all of them their future. And it all happened at eight, nine years old. But just being able to know and that excitement and I've been noticing over this last season how many times there's been stuff that's beginning to happen that I could say what's going to happen before it happens. And it's starting to pick up and it's beginning to, to increase because now I've taken responsibility for something that he had so I get to share in what he had, the equipment that he had. You, you see in this principle. This is a principle of impartation. Because there's an impartation that comes through laying on of hands. We're going to talk about that. But there's an impartation that comes just by being around it. But it's, there's levels of impartation, and you determine how deep the impartation goes. The impartation of the laying on of hands. We talked about Joshua 
um, Elisha never got hands laid on him. But we go a little bit further on, and you talk about Paul and Timothy. And it's funny, I mean, you quoted the scripture earlier about fanning to flame, and then the gift that's in you by the laying on of hands. Paul had imparted a spiritual gift to Timothy, and that spiritual gift had been given through the laying on of hands. And Timothy was Paul's protege. He, he, he was doing the things that Paul did. Uh, we know in church history, he was known for miracles. He was known for planting churches. He, he oversaw multiple different churches. Paul sent him back to, to Ephesians for a period of time. He pastored a church that some people believe was up to 40,000 people at one point in time in Ephesus um, that, that he was overseeing. And, and he had this gift that had been given him by Paul, this gift of apostling. And, and he used it. He had a boldness. Now, I, I, there's not clear pictures in Scripture of exact testimonies of what Timothy did, but there's plenty of stories of Paul talking to others about receive Timothy because he's a fellow worker. He, he has the same heart. There's nobody else that I trust to have the same passions, the same direction as I do this one, this man. There had been something that had been given, but we also get another clue that when you get something through the laying on of hands, that you still have to fan it into flame. You, you, you have to actually stir up what has been put within you that you can't just say, oh, I got it. And when God wants me to use it, I'll feel it. I'm waiting. you'll wait a long time usually you know how hard it is to steer a car when it's in park I mean you turn that steering wheel all you want it's really hard to turn and all it does is shake a little bit you start moving and you turn that steering wheel and you actually get directed I don't know if I'll handle it right. You probably won't at first. But you don't learn through your victories. You learn through your mistakes. It, Larry Randolph, he has a way of putting things. It's one of my favorite quotes of Larry Randolph. When God determined your destiny, he factored in your stupidity. <laughs> Just try it. She got it. <laughs> just, just, just go out there and try it. Give somebody a word. Heal the sick. What's the worst thing that can happen? They think you're weird. They do already. Not much has changed. You see how this works? So what's your expectation? Because one of the things that I've found about the effectiveness of impartation when hands are laid on is your level of hunger. I remember this was, this was right after I started pastoring. It's probably 2006, 2007. I was at a Randy Clark meeting. And he was talking about impartation. He's telling uh, about all of these stories about impartation. And while he's talking, he, he, he says, you know, do you want it? And I, I just ran right up front. I didn't realize that that wasn't the, the altar call. <laughs> I, I got all the way up there, and he laid hands on me before he realized it wasn't the altar call. And while I'm on the ground, he tells everybody else, no, 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 not yet. I'll tell you when it's time for ministry time. But I wanted it. I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to miss out. If God was giving something, 
I was going to do whatever it took to get it. And if that means moving across the country, I move across the country. If that means running up in front of everybody, I'm going to run up in front of everybody. I'm going after him no matter what it costs. Because I'm hungry for more. I know there's more. I've seen it. Some of it I've seen with my eyes, but some of it I've seen with my spirit. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. And I want to have every tool that's available so when it comes, I'm ready. Do you? Because if you're hungry, you'll begin to pull. Your expectation will begin to arise and you'll begin to pull on God for something from Him. I came out of that meeting and we started seeing a whole nother level of miracles. We'd gone, I mean, we saw, I mean, we saw a whole lot of miracles. I mean, some of those meetings we had when Jeremy was there. But it was pretty normal for us to see miracles. But after that, it was, it was a different level. We started getting medically documented. This guy was taking off all of his heart medication. And the doctor's like, we don't know what happened. We know he doesn't need heart medication. The only thing the patient says is that friends prayed for him. We've got before and after MRIs of MS, before MRI, lesions on the brain. The guy walked in with both crutches and barely able to walk. The first meeting, he he walked out without the crutches, still in pain. A year later, he came back for more. And we got an MRI after that meeting. All the lesions were gone. He was totally healed. If you're hungry, you can get it. Now, I've, I've never hung around Randy Clark. I, I've never served Randy Clark. But you know what I did? As soon as that started happening, whenever we had a healing meeting, we tithed from our offerings from the healing meeting to Randy Clark because I understood the principle. Because I want to honor what God has done and what God is doing in my life. I know, I know where he has used to touch me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless that because I want to maintain it. I, I don't want just a flash in the pan where I say, yeah, I laid on the floor for 45 minutes and, and just felt God. It was beautiful. Couldn't get up in front of 4,000 people. It was embarrassing, but it was beautiful, <laughs> right? That's, that's a cool story, but... I wanted to walk in those miracles two weeks later, three weeks later, two years later, ten years later. And so we continued going after it. I remember being in a meeting with Andre in Worcester. Timothy Chapman put together this uh, conference, and me, him, and Jeff Jansen were speaking at it. That was a crazy meeting. And, and Andre starts ministering. And if I remember correctly, didn't you have people stand up and hold hands and then you just release stuff on them? And I'm like, that's cool. I'm grabbing hold of that. Now, I never asked Andre to lay hands on me. But about a month or two later, I, we were doing a meeting and Holy Spirit begins to fall. And I just noticed two people, and I, I don't know what I noticed about them, but I just, two people were highlighted. So I told them to get up and to grab hands in the middle of the the aisle. And as soon as they grabbed hands, they went down. And so I'm like, all right, two more. Hey, you and you. (laughs) And we just did that half the night. Why? Because I'd seen it demonstrated. I honored what I saw and I began to step into it because I had hunger for it. See, some of you are waiting until you have an angel stand in front of you telling you, you have it. Don't wait. Believe. It's by faith that you access the things of the Spirit. But believe that God said that there's something about laying on. I mean, Hebrews 6 says it's one of the basic elementary doctrines of Christianity that if you don't get that, you shouldn't be moving on to other things. 
One of the basic things is the laying on of hands. That, that's a basic thing. It's a foundation of our faith. You access what's been given by faith. You stir it up by reminding yourself of what God did, what God said, who God is, and where you got it from, and you begin to move forward with what you have, and you give it away. And as you go, God will move with you, confirming with signs and wonders. As you go, you begin to see. We spend so much time saying, God, come! But two-thirds of God's name is go. It's in the going that you see the activation that you're looking for. A beautiful thing, when you get a base where there's something going on that you can come back to, you go out, you use it, and you come back, you get filled up, you go out, you use it, you come back, you get filled up, and then instead of this being a gathering place, this becomes a sending place because that's what God intended when he began to pour stuff out here. He intended that this would be a place where people would catch something and go. They would take it into their communities. They'd take it into their families. They'd begin to release stuff. They would actually grab hold of what was being given, and they would become it when they left. It wasn't intended to be about good meetings. It was intended to be about preparing you for your destiny because God has plans that would blow your mind if he let you into them. So don't try to figure out that. Just be faithful now. Some of you have pictures. Some of you know what's coming. Some of you have, have, have prophetic promises of where you're going to be at five years from now, ten years from now. Some of you have things that you know is happening. Don't wait. You will never get there if you're not faithful with what you have right now. What, what, what impartations have you gotten? Have you had somebody with a gift of faith lay hands on you? Do you use it? Do you put yourself in situations where if God doesn't show up, you're embarrassed? That's, that's how you activate the gift of faith. You put yourself in an impossible situation. The gift of healing? How often do you see sick people that you don't pray for? Gift of prophecy? You know, sometimes you just got to go for it. You don't know if it's going to work. So, sometimes when you're giving somebody a prophetic word, because I, I mean, I've, I, don't, I can't even count how many prophetic words I've given, you, you, you just start talking. I, I, I've had meetings where I, um, I don't know who I'm supposed to prophesy over. Uh, there was a, it was an eight year old girl. And I'm like, hey, do you want to help me with a meeting tonight? And she, was, you know, she wasn't quite sure because she didn't know if she wanted to be up in front of everybody. But she talked to her, her brother to come up with her. And so the two of them came up. And they're like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, just look out. And whoever you think is supposed to be encouraged, you point them out and I'll, get a, I'll give them a word. All you got to do is just point at somebody. So she pointed at one person, gave them a prophetic word read their mail. They, she pointed at the next one, did the same thing. She pointed at the next one. Why? It's by faith. I have an impartation that I've been given. I, I mean, it, like, it, you want to hear about prophetic words, study the life of John Paul. <laughs> Man, I have an impartation that I've been given. I can just access it. Just go for it. Just try it. Just step out. Surprise yourself. It's okay. God is better than you thought. All right, I think we sing about that sometimes. He really is. And when you begin to let go of the disappointments of yesterday. You, 
you, you can't change yesterday. And you can't live in tomorrow. Today. Like Jesus says, each day has enough trouble of its own. Today. Believe God, today is the day of his salvation. Today is the day of God's power. Now, here. How bad do you want it? Will you go after it? Just increase your presence there. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come more. I never got to go to a, I, I still haven't gotten to go to a Rodney Howard Brown meeting, but. Somebody showed me a video of one of the meetings from the early 90s. If you ever seen a drunken mess, that was a drunken mess. Oh, my. I mean, he just walked around the room, and wherever he went, people just kind of fell out, started laughing, and then he'd stop and point at somebody, and they would laugh hysterically. I mean, it just, it just, just that atmosphere had opened up. I was in Singapore a couple years ago, and... The guy introduces me, the pastor, and as I go up to grab the mic, I just feel something drop on me. I thought of that meeting, and I just stepped into it. And the rest of the meeting, I just walked around the room and pointed at people. I watched him fall out, laughing hysterically, watching waves just go through rows as you go by, and you're just like, Whoop. and And the whole row just begins to laugh and shake and tremble. Why? Because I saw something that was available in God, and I believe that it's the same God then as it is now. I believe it's the same God for him as he is for me. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I just stepped in by faith, and it activated. It was available. And it's available for you. It's not about whether or not you're disqualified. If you wonder if you're disqualified, look at the bloody, broken body of your Savior. That'll tell you whether or not you are disqualified. He has forever answered that question. The blood is enough. And if you're not sure, just repent again. If you haven't repented, repent. Just let go and believe that He forgives. Yesterday does not determine tomorrow. Your past does not determine your future. You have a God that rewrites history. You have a God that redeems, that forgives, that sets you free, that sets you on a path to accomplish His purposes. You have a God that doesn't believe in shame, and you don't have to either. You've not been disqualified. Yeah, but I never got around these great men of God. I, I never got the opportunity to be around and to see this stuff happen. I, so, is God limited to distance? Honor in your heart what you know of it. Honor in your heart what you know. I, I never got to be around William Branham, but I decided that I was going to spend a year and a half of my life studying his ministry because I wanted to understand what it was that God did and why it didn't end well. Because I know that we're coming into a season where God's going to give. I mean, there, there was testified, <laughs> Bob Jones, not testified, the, the vision that was shared of Bob Jones going walking down the sands of time and pulling out the box with all the draft cards. And he, and he begins to pull out the draft cards. And as he's looking at the draft cards, the angel speaks to him and says, the gods reserve the best of every bloodline for this generation. 
So you, you can think about the, the activity that's gone by. You can think about the anointing that was somebody's life that is not with us any longer. And you can realize there's more that's available now. That everything that was done in the past was foreshadowing what's coming. And there's going to come a time where there's again, I mean, William Branham was 100% accurate when he went into a vision with a word of knowledge. 100% accurate. Nobody's ever done that in all of history. And it's going to not be unique as we come into the season that we're coming into. Because we're coming into a season where there's going to be people that rise up, a prophetic voice that rises up where God lets none of their words fall to the ground. And there's going to be a company, what we call prophets, we're going to have to find a new name for them compared to what's coming. And so I began to study, I began to press in, I began to watch the videos, I began to read the testimonies and, and, and the words of knowledge that he would give and the things that happened and the miracles that happened. I went and I visited the church that he built and I had to deal with the, the, the band around my head because of the Branhamites and that false religion that, that, that they've turned into a cult and they worship him more than they worship God and they study his prophetic words rather than the Bible on Sunday. And I had to deal with that, but I sat in the chair in his office and that chair vibrated with power and I said, God, you're the same God as you were then, you are now. And I, I don't know if I, can, if I can be trusted with it, but I'm going to take as much as I can. About six months after that period of time, I'm in a meeting, and I think of William Branham, and all of a sudden I have this picture, and I know, and I point over, and I said, there's a Susan over there. Three and a half years ago, you were in a car accident, and I should have said the color of car, because I found out later I had the right color of car, because I could see the car. I said, and you, and you hurt your neck and your shoulder, and you've been in pain. You're not in pain all the time, and the pain is not bad right now, but you've taken medication for the pain. Who are you? Stand up. There was only one Susan. She stood up, and I said, well, you might as well sit down. You're already healed because I knew how it worked because I'd studied William Branham's anointing because that was his anointing and I just stepped into it for a moment but a moment is not enough there's always more so you can step in in the moment but keep on going keep on going keep on pressing in because what you believe in what you honor what you're willing to go after you can have it in the kingdom because he is the giver of gifts not the person not the vessel that it came through it's about him it's about your hunger for his presence for his promise he has said that he would pour out his spirit in the last days and he's going to release stuff and he's going to release it now and if you want it come up The oil just came. Lord, we just release the oil right now. Just release it. Put your hands out. Lord, we just release the oil. Come. Come. Let the fire come. Just let it come. Just let it, just let it wash. Just breathe it in. You feel it come on you. Just breathe it in. More. 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 Cloud is coming into the room. More of the cloud, Lord. We want your presence. Let your manifest glory come. Fire! Come, come, just release the power, Lord. <laughs> more, 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 more. Here, Lord, here, here, here. Fire, 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 more. Here, here, here. Don't get distracted. Keep it on him. Keep your attention on him. Do you want it from him or from me? Because if you want it from me, you're not going to get much. Don't wait for me to lay hands on you. You grab hold of it. It's in the air right now. There is a cloud in this room. I see it hanging right here and right here. Just reach up and grab it. Father, we believe that you said that you would release the best of every generation into this generation. 
Why not here and why not now? Why not this people? Why don't you begin to anoint this people this time, right here, right now? Would you begin to release anointings? Would you begin to release callings on their life? Lord, miracles and words of knowledge and prophecy, angelic visitations, the tangible presence of God, the fire of God coming. More, 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 more. Come, come, just release it. All of it, all of it. Fire. 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 Visitations. Come. 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 Just release your fire. Your fire, Lord. Miracles. Miracle anointing. Miracle anointing. Miracle anointing. Miracle anointing. Let it come. Let it come. Just increase. 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 This young man right here. The Lord is releasing a prophetic mantle on your life. You're going to begin to see. You're going to begin to know things and understand things. You'll see the future before it happens. Believe it when it comes. Trust what God puts in your heart. You've been asking. You've been hungering for more of him. And he just said yes. Your ears are now open to hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Just receive it. There it is. Jesus, thank you. Come, more, 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 more. We want more. We want more. We want more. Father, I ask for a stewardship, a stewardship. Right here, a stewardship of anointing, a stewardship of what you're going to be poured out. Lord, I thank you that they've given themselves to releasing impartation. And I ask for a greater stewardship of impartation. That through them, that you would release callings, you would release destinies. That you would release, you would launch people, launch people. That there would be stories of those that have received impartation, that have done great things in the nations because of what they received. Lord, I thank you for what's been, but I'm asking for an increase, for an increase, not just of what, you've, what they've seen, not just of what they've received personally, but of what they've believed in, in others that they never got to meet. I just release that faith right now for miracles, for anointings. Just think of, think of that person that walked in the anointing that you want to walk in. Just put it in your head right now. Begin to ask God to pour it out. Just begin to ask God to pour it out. Fire! Come. Come. More. 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 Let the fire come. Let the fire come. Let your fire come, God. Let your fire come. Here. Power. Power. Jesus. Come. 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 Come, just release right here. Words of knowledge, God. Words of knowledge. We just release the words of knowledge in the name of Jesus Christ. More, more. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. More, 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 more. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. Keep pulling. If you've been released as part of the ministry team here, feel free to begin walking around and just laying hands on people. More, more, Lord. More. Just let the fire come. Let the fire come. Let the fire come. Let the fire come. I know in the natural that you're going to be helping with the Elisha School, the Elisha Academy, but I just looked over here and I saw Gordon Lindsay. I saw Gordon Lindsay and I saw a stewardship, a stewardship and an encouraging of a breakthrough revivalist, a breakthrough evangelist, one that would steward, one that would be known as one that launched people into the nations, that would have the vision, Christ for the nations. Christ is for the nations. And I just release that over you, the stewardship of anointings to mentor people in their gifting. Maybe they walk in things beyond what you walk in, but you can mentor them. You can help them. You can encourage them. You can release them. You can give them a platform. 
And I just release that right now in the name of Jesus. Come, more, more, more. Fire, 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 fire. Just grab her hand. Right here. Fire, fire, fire. Let the anointing come. Let the anointing come. Let the anointing come. More. More. Let it come. Let the anointing come. Let the anointing come. Power. The power, God. The power. Just release the power. More. Jesus. Jesus. Come. 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 More. More fire, Lord. More fire, God. More fire, God. The anointings of the past coming into today. You are the God outside of time. You are the God outside of time. We just call them into the now in Jesus' name. We call them into the now in Jesus' name. I just see the mystical realm all over you. God's going to begin to release angelic encounters. He's going to begin to take you into visions. You're going to begin to have encounters in the mystical realm. And your faith level is going to begin to increase. And through intercession, you're going to see miracles happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus, come, 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 right here, fire, fire, fire. More, more, more. Just release it. It's the fire. The fire. The fire. Who was it that earlier, not now, but earlier when I said, think of someone, thought of Maria Woodworth Edder? Wave your hand. Who else? All right, just put your hands up right now. I just felt the Lord say he was going to begin to release the trance realm. Father, we just say yes to the trance realm being released right now in the name of Jesus Christ. They accessed it by faith, and I say yes. I put the stamp of heaven on their faith in the name of Jesus. Release the anointing. The anointing trances in Jesus' name. Come, 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 come. More, 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 more. Jesus, Jesus, come, 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 come. Who has who has scoliosis or something wrong with their sc- spine that's causing back problems over here? That's you. Anybody else? That's you. All right, that's that's where I thought. All right, so both of you, just put out your hands. Just just receive just receive from the Lord. Father, we just recognize that you're healing backs right now. You're healing these two backs. We just speak to scoliosis. We speak to the spine. We command healing to come in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak that release now. Now, 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 now. Back healed. Now, now move it around and test it. Move around, and test it. The two guys behind you are going to pray for you if it's not completely healed yet. They're going to keep on praying for you. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Right here, no weapon formed against me on your shirt. I just saw an ecstatic region, like a, it's a, um, like a Stacy Campbell anointing coming on you. I just release that ecstatic prophecy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We just release it. Let the fire of God come. Take over her body. Take over her mind. And release the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, come, come. Prophecy come in Jesus' name. More. Let it come. Fire. 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 Jesus, come, 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 more Lord, more Lord, more Lord, yes Lord, 
We just say yes to the fire. Just continue to rest on your people. Just continue to pull on him. There's more. There's more. He's not done. He's not done. Just continue to pull on him. Put your hunger. Put your hunger after his presence, after him. Like the ultimate mantle is the mantle of Jesus Christ. The ultimate mantle is the mantle of Jesus Christ because he had them all. Pull on him. It's all in him. It's available in him. It's available in him. More, 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 more. Holy Spirit, here, now, fire, fire, fire. Just increase, 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 increase. Eyes to see, eyes to see in Jesus' name. More, more. Jesus. Oh. Oh. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, 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 more right here. 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 Evangelism released. Evangelism released right here in Jesus' name. Evangelism released right here in Jesus' name. Come. Come. Come, 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 more, 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 more. Here, fire. Oh! Jesus, come, come. Increase, increase, Lord. More fire. More fire. More fire. More fire right here. The glory is all over you. I just release right now. More, more. Let it come. Let it come. Fill, fill. 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 More. More, more. Fire. Fire. Miracle anointing. Miracle anointing. Just release it right now. Miracle anointing. More. 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 Fire. 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 More fire. More fire. More fire. More fire. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it.
come, come Lord. More. More fire, God. More fire. More, 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 more. More fire, God. More. More. Oh. Jesus. Fire. Holy. 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 Father, I thank you for releasing angels to walk around. Father, I thank you for releasing angels to walk around. We just say yes to the messengers of fire. We just say yes to the messengers of fire. Father, begin to release anointings of fire. Anointings of fire. Anointings of fire in Jesus' name. Come. More. 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 More, God. More, God. More, God. More, Lord Jesus. Right here. More. More. Intercession. More fire, 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 more, 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 more fire.
All of it, Lord. <laughs> More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Here, fire. writing gifts right now. Prophetic writing gift in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy with a pen. Prophesy with a pen. More, 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 more. More. Just increase your presence, God. Just increase. Increase your presence, God. Increase your presence. Increase your presence. It's fun when we get into this place, when you begin to look around and see what God's doing other places, you stop looking at Him. Keep your attention on Him. Keep your attention on what you want from Him. Keep your attention on your hunger, your expectation from Him. He is the one who fills. He is the one that releases. He is the one that releases. He is the God that answers by fire. It is Yahweh who answers by fire. He is the God. He is the God who answers by fire. Lord Jesus, I just ask you would increase your presence around this room. All those whose hearts are turned to you begin to fall upon them. Let the winds be released. Let the winds be released. Let the winds be released in Jesus' name. Come, 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 come. More, more, more.
<laughs> Woo. Come on now, thank God. You don't even know what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, thank God his notes broke. <laughs> He's got it so good. Whew. <laughs> hey, look, the kids are playing with oil. Whew, must be a sign. <laughs> Just put your hands out, you guys. He's not done. <laughs> we should have thought. We should have thought twice before knocking the worship leader out. <laughs> <laughs> more lord lord we just thank you for this release of holy spirit impartation god and we do we just ask right now lord release it more Lord, let the increase of your fire come into this room right now, Lord. We thank you that you brand people, you mark people tonight, Lord. God is burning ones to carry the torch of revival, to carry fire to the nations, God. Let the winds of heaven be released right now. <laughs> Listen, I want our ministry team to come up here and grab one of these. I'm going to have to replace these bottles of oil. <laughs> come and grab one of these. I want you just to start going around, those on the ministry team, and just start oiling people up. <laughs> come on, just pass those around. How many know that out of the mouth of babes, God's perfected praise? This little girl found all these bottles of oil. I'm going to have to buy more oil for Pastor Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, just start praying for people. Listen, if you guys uh, want to just be in the presence, you can be in the presence for a little while longer. We're just going to release the ministry team to, to pray for people. If you need a healing, a miracle, a prophetic, just go to them. They got badges on. Listen, they're going to pray. They're going to lay hands on, uh, on, on people here tonight. But whoo. <laughs> Woo, but just keep receiving. Many of you are actually going to get an even stronger anointing just from the atmosphere. Lord, release that anointing. Release that glory right now, God. Woo. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. Jesus, come on, just keep receiving. Keep receiving. <laughs> <laughs> 